<laughs> That's okay. What I'm going to do is set this so that it's back far enough, and I'm going to kind of jump in between here and there, and it's going. So, uh, Linda, thank you so much. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And it was yeah. fun just to be here with everybody. It's so it's so cool. After two years of COVID and everybody going, no, you can't do this. I know. We shouldn't have been down. The buildings are all closed. So we've had our great speakers. And uh, I'm telling you, a 30-year mortgage, ADL, it doesn't get any easier than what he said. You just need to have a job. You need to be able to qualify for a loan. You need to be able to buy a property, and then another one, and then another one, and let time go on, and a 30-year fixed rate loan. I didn't even ask him on that last call, how about a 40? And he said, yes, a 40 is great. And that's what Alex Show talked about. And he said, I would do a 100-year loan. <laughs> ADL, I would do a 100-year loan. And I just went, okay, then I guess ours wasn't so bad after all. But I was totally crazy, you know? Uh -huh. uh, and the beauty of that 40-year loan that Alex gave us is that in the first 10 years, it's interest only. And you can pay off as much as you want during that 10-year period. So if I have some passion out there in the world that's making me some money and I get chunks of money as time goes on, I can pay 10000 I can pay 20000 whatever. At the end of that 10 years, your mortgage rate that you pay per month starts off, and it actually it, it stays the same because each time you're putting money into it, that mortgage principal goes down, so your payment goes down. So that if you had a... $500,000 loan, and by the time you got to the 10th year, you paid it down by $200,000 or $300,000, and you only had $200,000 left to pay, your mortgage payment every month for the next 30 years is that lower rate. You can never do that with a 30-year fixed rate loan, because yeah. it stays the same until you finally pay it off, unless you refinance it, which a lot of people do, but if you're at, you know, 3.8% or 4.1, the last thing you want to do is refinance it. So we can pay this thing down like crazy and then have a much less monthly payment when we get to that point, if we choose to. But listening to him say, I'd love to have one for 100 years, makes me go, do we want to pay it off? <laughs> Maybe I could die and not have to worry about it. I don't know. You know, our kids would. So a few things that I'm going to cover here is uh, SB Rio, that's what we're doing here, uh, Meetup. We have a uh, meetup with about 800 some members. The good thing about meetup is that when you're on there, people get to see who you are. They get to find out what, you, what your service is, what things that you have to offer them, and vice versa. So, and it's free for people to sign up. It costs me money to have it, but it's a small price. Uh, YouTube, we've got everything up on YouTube. NH Big, these are you know, different companies that I have, Personal Power Project. Uh, so let's take a quick look at some things here. Opinions are like awesome. Everybody has one. Now you've heard that probably said a little differently. And as we got closer to this meeting, I got to thinking how interesting it is because all this stuff about what we ask for and what we get and what we focus on is purely perception. And all this stuff about opinions, opinions are people arguing and trying to get other people to convince their point but if you just look at them and go, thank you for expressing that opinion. I, was, I really got something out of that. It's true for her. Whatever she says, you're right. I'm not here to say you're wrong because it's your life. And whatever you're doing is true for you. The same for me. Whatever I'm doing is true for me. So if I tell you, you really ought to check this out, it might not work for you at all. You might be saying, well, hey, I tried going to an auction. I never really got a deal. You must be some kind of scammer. That's stupid. Well, if you had passion I had, you might have got a deal. Who knows? So opinions are like awesome. You know, just love to hear people's opinions. We don't need to be right. We don't need to argue. We don't need to try to debate and convince one person or another because it's really true for them. Okay? Real estate works. What you know, what works in real estate? Well, your passion. It could be probate. It could be fixing and flipping. It could be a million things in real estate that you 
are good at or make money because you have that passion in there. So really, what works is your passion. Okay, what works in this market? <laughs> passion. Again, whatever you're up to, whatever you're doing, when Jeremy says, well, I'm fixing a flipping and everybody says the market's down, and the stupidest thing you should ever do is try to fix the flip in a down market. And Jeremy is going to tell you, hey, look, we used to pick out deals and, you know, do them that were a little sketchy, but we're a lot more careful now. But we're still doing it because I have a passion and I'm doing it. And he'll be the first to tell you, no problem, I'm going to continue doing it. And it's not going down that much in the market either, right? No. Not, not that much. That's accurate, and no, it's not going down that much. <laughs> yeah, exactly, okay. So, uh, land, and that's why I was asking about land, you know, personally, there are people out there, and we had him at one of our meetings years ago, the land flipper. And, excuse me, Jack Klosh, I think his name is. Yeah, it's Jack Klosh. Okay. This guy is fantastic. If you want to be able to flip something and not have to worry about what Jeremy is doing and fixing things up and go through all that stuff and juggle it around, Land flipping is another way you can make money, mm -hmm. and you don't have to deal with any of the stuff that real estate sitting on that land is. And if you get a good lender, then, you know, they can help you from the ground up. And I'm trying to talk Jeremy into not only doing rehab, but to get somebody that wants to get the land and do from the ground up, because doing the ground up is probably where you get some of the best profit, because you've gotten the land really cheap, and you're not just fixing the place up, you're putting a huge amount of value into it because now you're putting a property on it that wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an idea. This is the house that I built about 26 years ago. Okay, we're living in it right now. It's on the top of San Marcos Pass, about seven acres. We own, you know, down here, a few acres, on the back side, about five acres. Um, the guy was asking, well, a 350 at the time, whenever you go to make an offer on anything, your job is to walk around and start meeting the neighbors. Because if you want to find out something about that property that you could work on and get a deal, you need to know from the neighbors, not from the owner. So I talked to the neighbors, and they said, oh yeah, he's been asking 350, people have been offering 320, been, <laughs> he's been saying no to them. You know, and I'm thinking, why did they just not give him 350? Because <laughs> back then, even that was, in my opinion, a pretty good deal. And he said, well, the guy's broke. He's, he's going to go into foreclosure, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure he'd take less. So I got to him and I said, hey, Steve, I love your property, but we got a problem. And he said, what? I don't want to insult you, but I know my numbers and I've got the spreadsheets and I know what I can do and what I can't do. And... You know, if I can't afford it, I can't afford it. I'm not going to be hurt or feel bad if you just tell me, Dan, you're crazy, get out of here, no way. And he said, well, come on, Dan, well, how much? And I said, I, all I can offer you is 160 for the seven acres. And he said, 160 for my best view property of all of them I've got up here. We have like, you know, 40 acres up there all split up. And I said, Steve, you know it's worth more. I know it's worth more. But if I paid any more than that, I couldn't do it. And it's okay if I can't do it. All you have to do is say no. You know what he said? Yes. I'd be a lot happier with 170000 <laughs> <laughs> And I had to work really hard not to do what you just did. Smile, be happy, laugh, go, oh, yeah. And I look at him and I said, well, you know, I'm going to have to talk to my wife about that because... You know, she's pregnant and the money's tight, and, but I'll get back to you. So I went back down and I talked to the neighbor again. And I said, there's a road that needs to be paved going up there because it's dirt. We can't even drive our car up there right now. It just slips and slides. And, you know, he said, well, you know, that road would probably cost about 20000 And I bet if you asked him, he'd pay for half of that because he's got a tractor and there's a lot of things he can do. So I went back and talked to him. And he said, yeah, I'll, I'll split the road cost with you. So we went from 170 back to 160. Really. <laughs> okay. And that was in 1995. And 220 was probably the peak here in Santa Barbara. 2022, I mean. Okay. 
At that time, when I looked at Zello, it was worth $3 million. Woo! And <laughs> that is the value of holding real estate over time, which ADL is saying over and over and over, you don't even need to get a good deal. You can get a deal that's negative as long as you can afford to make the payments, and over time, you're just going to be fine. I'm worried about it. So that's it. You need to have some kind of job where you have income so that you can qualify for a loan. I was working at the university at the time, so I had really good loans. My wife was working as a nurse, really good loans, and we were able to pull this all off and you know, work with the Honesty uh, Bank and Trust, and she would tell me, well, Dan, how far did you have to bend today when you went in and talked to them? And I said, you know, I got to my ankles, I got to my toes, and every day I go there, and you know, they're just grilling me. But it was worth it, and it's a wonderful place to live, and uh, there's our backyard, the seven acres, okay, which is just nothing but oak trees, and we brush it a lot. There's our dogs, which get to go run around free, you know, Jake and Elwood, the Blues Brothers, <laughs> We've had dogs over and over that none of them have ever had to be locked up there. They just get to run free because it's a big enough place up there. And that's the view from the front yard. Mm. So, you know, I'm kind of looking at this all and going, okay, I don't work at the university. I used to come home and go, well, there's a the gardener, there's the dogs, everybody's enjoying the view, but I'm working my butt off at the university. When do I get to enjoy this? Well, that finally happened about 15 years ago. And I went out and I got some properties in the Midwest to start doing all that stuff in my retirement. I retired at something like 54, 55. Well, we had this rental property. I sold off all that stuff during the pandemic and got rid of it because I figured, you know, <laughs> the value's not going up any higher. The market's got to crash eventually. When it goes down, it's going to take me 15 years to wait for this stuff to go back up again. Let's get rid of that stuff. And we did, but we had this one rental property left, which was here in town on the state of Coonera. We've got our daughter in there now. And thanks to Alex and his son, we got both of these places refinanced. And here's what you have to watch out for in life because you might get what you're asking for. $5,000 probably purchased that house back in 1960. And the house wasn't there. It was right off of Highway 154 where they were making and widening the road to get up to the pass back then in 1960. And her dad was one of the original fix and flip guys, her, my wife's father. And so her mother was at an auction here in town and they were looking at some of these properties that they were pulling out. And they were gonna move them and try to put them on some vacant land someplace. And so her mother's back there, and you know, they're doing the auction, and everybody's waving their hand and bidding, and the thing's going and going, and all of a sudden she sees her husband walk in, and she goes, I'm over here. And the auctioneer said, sold. <laughs> 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 and they both looked at each other like, what? You know, but that's why they were there. So they said, oh, okay. So they, they went ahead and got the house, they got this lot, they put it on the lot, Around the 1980s, when my wife and I got married, we tried to sell that property and about three other properties and get out of California because that was in a recession back then, <laughs> I recall. And what I found out was that the appraisers, the, the values of properties were going down so fast that the appraisers couldn't give a correct appraisal. Imagine that. Wow. We were trying to sell it for 350 or something like that, and we couldn't sell it. And it was the same thing with all the other properties because they were kind of going down in value. But what I found out, now we were trying to sell for 300, what I found out is they would give me an appraisal for 350, even though I knew the house wouldn't even sell for three because we had it in the market and I was trying to sell it myself with some other properties. Nothing was selling, and I looked at her and I said, hey, you know what? We can get way more money on the appraisals and go build this house up on the San Marcos Pass that we could ever imagine getting because they don't know the true value. You can go out on any property and get 10 appraisers and you're going to get a different value from all appraisers. So I said, let's just do that instead. And that's what we did. Okay? We run the Santa Barbaria out of this building, which is the Marriott on Hollister Avenue going out to UCSB. Okay, so we will probably get back into doing that more often now that the pandemic's gone. 
I wiped out those properties and got rid of that headache. I spent some time going back here trying to do some fix, not fix and flip, but uh, wholesaling. And as I called people up that had their homes for sale, have you ever called up a for sale by owner? I call them up, and I've been doing this for about six months, and every time I call them up, they go, what do you want? <laughs> I said, well, I just called because I think your house is for sale. What do you want? I said, well, I was kind of interested in buying your house. Well, don't think you can talk me down on the price because I'm not coming down. <laughs> and after about six months of that, I went, wow, these people are like way in la la land with the value is of their house. They're asking way more. And they're really angry, and they're probably never going to get sold. And then what happens is eventually they have to give it to a realtor because they can't do it. And then they jump from realtor to realtor to realtor because, you know, the realtors were kind of new and they took a house on for sale that they should never take it on. And then maybe they take it off the market or they do sell it and they're angry and upset because they had to lower their price to a real price, something realistic. Well, the meeting room looks like that. We got about 300 or 839 members in the meetup. Um, so it's a good thing, you know, the meetup is good for everybody. I put everything up on YouTube. And uh, Linda has done a fantastic job Thank on YouTube. You. Two years ago, she had very little up there. And I said, Linda, you're doing all this stuff. Why aren't you videoing it? Why aren't you putting it up online? She's been doing virtual meetings now for two years? Yes, two, two years. years. Mm -hmm. wow. And she's putting all these virtual meetings up there. If you want to see ADL again and listen better to what he said because the quality is better because she did it all properly, she's got a lot of good content up. I mean, I look at that and I go, yeah, don't charge because I want it for free, but you should be. <laughs> you know? It's really good content, so you need to look at her website. I've got some stuff up there too. A lot of it has to do with renewable. A lot of it has to do with real estate. I've got two. I've got a uh, C-Corp, which is the NH bid, and an LLC, so the C-Corp is wholesaling. C-Corp is basically earned income. And an LLC is investment income. So when you're looking at taxes and you're looking at trying to deal with things that juggle it all, and you're trying to get loans and qualify for them, if all you have is investment income and you don't have any earned income, it can be more difficult to get a loan. It's really easy if you're working at a job in W-2, not a problem. So I've been looking at this business and they've been telling me tax-wise, Dan, you've got to go make some money in NH bid. Because if you don't, you've got seven years worth of write-offs that we can't do anything with. So get out there and make some, some earned income somehow. And you can be a contract worker. You don't have to be W-2, okay, to get earned income. So I'm going, okay, I, can, I think I can do that. I'll do that. Um, the properties on the LLC, you want to put your properties in there for long-term investment, but that is investment income. And it's so funny to hear things like, I want to get uh, passive income, okay? Who has passive income? I've been reading these different articles lately, and Warren Buffett has what he calls investment income in the stock market, because it's long-term and it's passive. We had somebody on your videos that said, anybody in the stock market is a gambler. That is not passive, that's gambling, you need to be in real estate, you need to do this, you know, and Warren Buffett's best friend for 50 years, who is, Har who is it Harvey Munger? Charlie, Charlie, Charlie Munger. Charlie. Thank you. Charlie Munger is a real estate guru, and he invests in real estate. And what is really passive, and what is really, you know, investing it's so funny to see different people with different opinions because, again, it's just, you know, opinions are awesome. <laughs> Everybody's got one. And the closest thing that I can say to truly passive income is my retirement from university because they pay me half my wage for the rest of my life. I worked at 26 years, and one day I decided, well, you know, I don't want to be a policeman. I was Santa Claus, and now I have to be a policeman? I think it's time for me to retire. And I walk in and they said, I said, well, what do I get if I retire? And they said, you will get half your wage for the rest of your life. And I said, oh, what do 
What do I get if I stay? And they say, well, you know, cost of living, inflation, you might get a little bit more each year from that, but kind of break even. And I went, okay, so half my weight and the rest of my life, that's like four rental properties. And they said, what? I said, that's another conversation. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> but I worked 26 years for four rental property. Okay, maybe I need to get out of here. That was at a time when it was really easy to fix a car to wholesale. And I made like $50,000 on a wholesale just by working with a realtor and putting something out there. And somebody came to me and said, I'm going into bankruptcy. It was really easy. So I thought, oh, yeah. As soon as I got out of university and the market started going down and we went into a recession, it was a lot harder. And I thought, ooh, this isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so, you know, there's different things you can do at different times. And this is the website for MH Big for wholesaling. And you know, you can wholesale lease to own. Uh, Randy Rusty, Rusty Tweed is now gone, he's not here. And I didn't want to bother him in the middle of class, but I walked out there and I said, Rusty, let me ask you something. You talk about 1031 exchange. And he said, yeah. And I said, uh, I know people that want to do a 1031 exchange and they want to find a property, but they're not really excited about it. 45 days, once they make this decision, they only have 45 days to, you know, find another property. I said, what if you did a lease to own? And the person who wants to do the 1031 exchange got a lease to own. They weren't living in it. They were renting it. But they had it for two years. And now they know the property they want because they're controlling it. They couldn't do that if they owned it. They have to not own it before you can do a 1031 exchange, right? Yeah. So now that they got that in place, they can go sell their house. Once they sell their house and they only have 45 days to find another one, they don't have to look because they've already got the deal. What kind of deal are you going to get in 45 days? We bought this piece of junk, but we only have 45 days, that's why we bought it. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a very good place or position to be in. Mm. So he looked at me and he goes, well, let me think, and he mentioned another way you could do it, but you need a lot of money, and finally he looks at me and he goes, yeah, yeah, you can do it. And his friend there said, yeah, but, but what happens if it falls through? Well, here's what happens if it falls through. You want to do a lease to own on your property? Okay, how about if I find somebody that will give you 100 Fifty to hundred thousand dollars non-refundable, and if it doesn't work out, and they blow it, and they don't buy it, you get to keep the hundred thousand. That's how lease to owns work. And as long as you have this all with your attorneys and your lawyers, and you, you know, because I talked to, uh, I met, I text ADL, and I said, well, what do you think about lease to own? He said, I've been doing thousands of properties for years, and I just don't do lease to own because it's complicated. Get too legal. I don't want to deal with it. But if you're doing a few of them here and there, and you're helping somebody out on 1031 exchange, you can say, okay, so you're going to get hundred thousand dollars from that buyer, but I'm going to take twenty out of it. You're really going to get eighty thousand because that's my fee for doing this, and you just pay twenty thousand for doing a lease to own on a 1031 exchange, and that's how you do it with no money. Uh, and she says, well, okay, yeah, I'll do that, and it works. You made some money. Okay, so you can. Wholesale lease to own. And 1031 exchange, in my opinion, is like a really good thing for people who are trying to go through that process. Does it happen very much? Rusty looked at me and said, I like it, Dan, it's a good one. Bring me one of those, we'll do it. I said, okay. You know? And it, it can be done. 